the brand new citizenship application is finally available. Infrastructure board bill passed in Parliament will tell you what changes. We'll dive into this month's parliamentary business and explain what made certain bills controversial. Heated debate between MPs causes the President to intervene. And finally, a request for beta testers on the test server. I'm CM Raiders. And I'm Matthew Tofu in One North. And you're watching Newsroom World Haven. Wolvehaveners voted in favour of the permanent residency rank during the January 2020 general election and referendum. Following the referendum, the PR rank was introduced by executive order in mid-January, then later passed by Parliament in February. These changes meant that new visitors who had completed the immigration test would be promoted to PR instead of citizen, and since then there had been no mechanism put into place for PRs to become citizens. This de facto hiatus on new citizens ended on the 13th of March 2020 when the new citizenship application was put into place. The new citizenship application mechanism is done on Google Forms and can be found in the rank slash application forms page on the official Wolfhaven website. PRs wanting to apply for citizenship will have to wait a week from their promotion to PR before applying through the new mechanism. They will undergo a second round of manual background checks and will not be eligible for promotion if they have had more than one act of warning or have been banned in the three months prior to their application. Applications will be processed on a weekly basis with results released every Saturday or Sunday. Promoted players will receive full citizenship rights including voting rights. The Infrastructure Board Bill proposed by Baymax 1020 was passed unanimously by Parliament on the 1st of March. The new bill aims to establish an infrastructure board to improve the contract system and ensure the efficient completion of all infrastructure projects. We talked to the Minister for Infrastructure, Baymax 1020, for more information. Hello, Baymax. Why was this bill proposed? What were the issues with the existing contracting mechanism? All right. So, um, you know, uh, before this bill, um, if you were the Minister uh, for Infrastructure, there wasn't really a way that you could plan or get stuff done in general because there wasn't really an official way for you to do it. If you wanted to do it, you just have to initiate yourself and talk to the president in direct messages, which is a bit of a hassle, right? Um, and so, you know, with this, we're giving, you know, the government in power uh, more opportunities to... Uh, jumpstart these projects because in the past it's mainly been the president himself um, or staff who are actually planning these projects and making sure they get done and you know uh, a benefit of something like this is that not only is it the minister planning but the minister has his board which consists of the president the prime minister and other knowledgeable or uh, other other knowledgeable and uh, experienced builders in Gardelia and what this means is that whenever we come up with a plan it's going to be a good plan right first of all um, you know with the lines we have right now I draft up a plan and then basically the members of the board and the president himself they all critique it we refine the plan and that's when we release it to the public and this ensures that the uh, final draft or the final plan that we have, which is then contracted, is the best it can be. Because we don't. The last thing we want is, um, you know, an alignment of a rail line, for example, that doesn't make everyone happy, or something that isn't realistic, or something that can't be built because it's not possible because of terrain constraints or space constraints or other factors, right? So what uh, this does is it ensures that the infrastructure that is built is the best it can be. And adding on to that. Um, you know, compared to the old system, the old system, um, usually it was just a president who would check up on work and made sure it was actually being done. Uh, with this bill, what it means is that the uh, ministry will actually be doing this for him. So it takes a bit of a workload off the president. So um, once I contract out something, I'll be checking up on it uh, frequently to make sure that deadlines are being met. And this way, you know, we don't have uh, significant delays when it comes to projects. How do the proposed changes in the bill uh, differ from the existing mechanism? What will change for potential bidders? So uh, in terms of changes, 
um, like I said earlier, uh, we're actually going to be checking up on contractors now and make sure that deadlines are being met. Um, and as I said earlier, um, the planning process is now going to be a bit, a lot more smooth. Um, you know, it's a lot easier for you to refine uh, any projects that you propose. And uh, in terms of people who are bidding, they won't really see much of a difference, to be honest. It's uh, this is more of an administrative behind the scenes change. So, uh, you know, for a member of the public, it would really be hard to notice these uh, changes. It doesn't really impact them as much. But, um, you know, if you're a staff member, if you're uh, an MP, you work in the government, then it's pretty easy to see the changes that are happening because, you know, it makes the planning of this a lot more easier. The bill ensures the provision of uh, the appointment of public servants. How, what will be the mechanism for the appointment? Okay, so when it comes to appointing um, any other members or public servants um, of this board, it's uh, up to the discretion of the Minister of Infrastructure. So obviously this means that the criteria for determining these members will differ depending on who the minister is. So currently the minister is myself and how I'm appointing these members is um, selecting people who have had a lot of experience in Gardelia, uh, more, more particularly in the infrastructure projects, and uh, you know people who are very knowledgeable in general. So uh, you know uh, one example uh, of this is the prime minister. The prime minister has been heavily involved in the Gardelia world and has been involved in planning several projects in the past. So obviously, I would want him on the board. Another uh, member that we have, it's Hao Pei. Um, and, you know, he's been very heavily involved in Gardelli as well. You know, he built a bunch of highways. He's uh, built the S-Bahn system for Westphalia, which is a, a commuter rail system. So, you know, if there's someone like him who's extremely knowledgeable, extremely experienced uh, to coming to planning these projects, you know, why wouldn't I want him on my team, right? And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm selecting people who are very knowledgeable, who know what they're doing. And as I said earlier, this ensures that the plans that I'm releasing are the best they can be and that I make something that everyone is happy with. On to this month's parliamentary business. In the end of February, three new bills were proposed to Parliament, of which two bills amassed quite the discussion, both proposed by Wolfhaven Architect Party MP Delfino 88, the Gardelia Neighboring Cities Bill, and the MP Public Register Bill. The former, which aims to make, quote, collaboration easier between nearby Gardelian cities, end quote, and the latter, which aimed to, quote, create a public register of MP votes, end quote. Newsnet interviewed Delfino 88 about the two bills that he proposed. When asked on why he proposed the bills, Delfino88 explained that the Gardelia Neighboring Cities Bill had the, quote, simple premise of making collaboration easier between nearby Gardelian cities, unquote. Intertown Connections, which before the implementation of the bill, required Gardelia Department approval. The bill was later amended by fellow MPs and independents in order to prevent exploitation and, quote, uncontrolled expansion towards another claim, unquote. While the aforementioned Gardelian Neighboring Cities Bill and the Asset Transfer Bill proposed by U United Wolfhaven Party MP Grass Jelly were passed unanimously, the MP Public Register Bill became the target for controversy from the opposing UWH government. As part of the WAP Party's, quote, Citizens Involvement Goal, end quote, Delfino 88 explained it aims to, quote, make relationships between citizens and their MP representatives easier, end quote, by allowing citizens to see what MPs have voted. The bill faced much op opposition due to a statement from the debate in which UWH MP Grass Jelly said a, quote, large amount of work that will likely fall into disarray due to high maintenance of this project, end quote. Fellow WAP MP Plank the Ink Devil tried to defend the bill by saying, quote, having a register of each session of vote is clearly going to benefit our citizens, unquote. However, it was revealed to Newsnet that Delfino 88 had originally planned to make it and maintain it himself, but, quote, proposed it as a bill so that Parliament and citizens could have the chance of interacting with the register before starting, unquote. During voting, the bill amassed four A's to ten no's, causing it to be rejected by Parliament. We spoke to United Wolfhaven Minister of Home Affairs Grass Jelly about why UWH MPs voted against the bill. 
United Wolf Haven MPs decided to vote against Bill 2020-6 on the basis that it is not needed and an unnecessary amount of extra work for the clerical department. Clerks working for the clerical department already have to work hard to publish Hansard and the order paper. This work would only be further amplified by the difficult UI that is the Shout Wiki interface. Speaking from personal experience, the work of the clerks is tedious, often taking hours on end to collate past debates and votes. Furthermore, the United Wolf Haven did not support this bill, as removing the debate from the report did not give any context to the vote, and hence failed to complete what the bill's proposal set out to do, which was to increase the accessibility of Parliament. The way this bill was proposed removes any record of what is said and any justifications made by MPs for their decisions. This now leads on to our next story. Following on from the MP Public Register Bill, which aforementioned had a mass controversy from the UWH party, despite the bill not having passed yet, Delfino88 had already set up a Wolfhaven wiki page for the register, which was being maintained even after rejection of the bill. On the 16th of March, one of the leaders of the UWH party, Minister of Home Affairs Grass Jelly, made in a statement on the Wolfhaven Discord Parliament channel, denouncing, quote, UWH condemns the behaviour and blatant ignorance of the parliamentary procedure of WAP's acting leader, Delfino88, in his actions surrounding the MP Public Register Bill, end quote. Let's listen to what Grass Jelly had to say. The main issue the United World Haven ultimately had with this bill was the unparliamentary way with which the bill's proposers set out to effectively fail-proof this bill. The bill's proposer personally said, quote, unquote, that there is not really a need for a vote, since the register is actually already active, voting yes or no will be irrelevant. This highlights the way that the Wolfhaven Architects Party member effectively bypassed any parliamentary proceedings, throwing them out of the window and disregarding them altogether. This blatant disregard for the very way and purpose of the parliament itself was not something we could allow. What's the point of having a parliament if you're not going to wait for, listen to, or respect the decisions formed and passed down in the house that exist to represent the people. In this way, Wolfhaven Architects Party has shown complete disregard for the parliamentary system by allowing their members to commit such acts that go against the very nature and purpose of parliament. He went on to criticise how Delfino 88 did not respect the vote of the House of Representatives and went further to question the validity of the quote turnout votes that were displayed on I's section of the register for the MP Public Register Bill. This image, taken from the Wolfhaven Wiki, previously showed three MPs, Kangaroo567, Matthew Tofu, and CM Raiders, all of the UWH party, of whom had initially voted I, but later changed their vote to nay as, quote, turnout votes. An intense debate involving mainly Grass Jelly and Delfino88 ensued, with Grass Jelly accusing Delfino88 of, quote, harassment of my MPs in direct messages, end quote, using the, quote, turnout vote as WAP propaganda, which may have had the potential to, quote, confuse future potential voters and maliciously mislead, end quote. Delfino88 denied the accusations, and then further implied that the word usage of Grass Jelly saying, quote, my MPs, meant that the UWH party MPs, quote, voting was controlled. Eventually, the debate was dissolved in part with Delfino88 apologising and removing the, quote, turnout votes on the MP register with advice from the president. Newsnet intervi- interviewed President Silverwolf about the Djibouti and his intervention. The president said that both Delfino88 and Grass Jelly had approached him for advice on a matter and that they both gave valid points on certain matters. The president also gave a general reminder for players to keep being respectful as parliament was still a functional role play. On the 4th of March, President Silverwolf announced that he was looking for beta testers to assist in the migration of the server to 1.13. The president clarified that the testing would actually be done in 1.12.2 on the server's test server. He explained that the plugins on the test server needed to be checked before upgrading it to 1.13. In addition, server developer Axton announced that players who reported errors with the home main Metro Plus plugin would be remunerated depending on the severity of the error. Coming up, construction of Central Peninsula Line extension completed. Admin yours truly leaves the server. Chef Derry Diemily ownership transferred to Blue the Giant New. 
Leon 100906 unbanned from Wolfhaven after a year and a half. And finally, we spoke to Imperial Block about his party popularity server which raised some eyebrows. Some positive Gardelia news for this month. The Central Peninsula Line has finally been extended on the 21st of March. The main builder, Vincent LUMC Fan, was interviewed on site by Newsnet to share his excitement and thoughts about the soon to be officially open CP Line extension. Vincent expressed his excitement, saying that the extension was long overdue. According to him, he built the extension and the shared IC2 station in around eight days with the help of fellow players Baymax1020 and Kovacs. When Newsnet asked about the absence of the CP-N14 station, Vincent said it was due to the swampy terrain and hence a quote low demand for that area. As a little message for viewers, Vincent wishes everyone to quote enjoy the rides as much as he had quote he was grateful for the opportunity and wishes for viewers to, quote, spread the love, end quote. The CP line extension adds six new stations, with architecture, quote, chosen to integrate with the environment, and extends the line from Bad Fischdorf all the way to the northern border, east of Cranbrook. Earlier this month, on the 15th of March, longtime admin and staff member, the only ghost admin on Wolvehaven, yours truly, had resigned from his position and left the server. Several Wolvehaveners expressed sorrow on his departure, with Vincent LUMC fans saying, quote, I miss his inside jokes, and Hinwapun reminiscing on how he, quote, made Parliament so much better, and that he, quote, misses him for roasting people in Parliament. Newsnet interviewed server owner Silverwolf for comment on Wyo's resignation. Quote, Wyo has been with Wolfhaven since 2012, and it is of course sad to see someone who has been around with us for so long ago. It is expected that people come and go, similar to how someone else might have to take over Wolfhaven in the future." End quote. The reasoning for Wyo's departure from the Wolfhaven server, according to Silverwolf, was due to, quote, personal commitments and research work in un university, end quote. Silverwolf thanks yours truly, quote, not only for his service as a member of staff on Wolfhaven all this while, but as a friend as well. On the last day of February, Chef Thierry D'Emily, founder Mineshafter61, announced that the corporation was looking to elect a new CEO. Members of the public were invited to apply for the position. Later on the 7th of March, Blue the Giant Noob was announced to be the new temporary CEO. Newsnet reached out to Mineshafter61 earlier this month. This is what he had to say. As the CEO, Chef Thierry D'Emily has always been my pride and commitment. However, with the increasing workload in real life, the company could no longer sustain its schedules as it is a one-person job. The branch on Wolfhaven is particularly taxing, with requests coming in almost every week as it is a large server. Two weeks ago, I pulled out a poll to determine the next leader of the Wolfhaven branch. However, no one decided to run for it until Blue the Giant Noob showed up. It was a relief for me as I still had an incomplete order on my side. With the next in line present, I took up the offer. Choosing Blue as the next CEO also had other reasons. Firstly, Blue's corporation, Real Traffic Solutions, is a railway company. First, 
it is in a position to make informed decisions to operate the Clarington Metro and do maintenance on the signals made by Chef Diadiemi. Secondly, as Blue is a loyal customer at Merrill Mart and Yoshiyamaya, I have greater trust in him with the company. Hence, Blue the Giant Noob will now be the CEO of Chef Diadiemi's with Heaven Branch. I hope the company will achieve greater heights with Blue. After one year, six months, and 20 days, the well-known Leon 100906 was finally allowed to appeal his permanent ban and rejoin the Wolfhaven community. He was welcomed back with staff encouraging the community to treat him free of any prejudice. Multiple party popularity surveys and projections popped up on Wolfhaven's Discord this month, one of which made by Imperial Block raised quite a few eyebrows. Newsnet spoke to him earlier this month about his projection. Imperial, starting with this first question, some Wolfhaveners are rather intrigued by your statistics regarding party popularity. How is this calculated? The calculations are done in a pretty simple way and considers that parties grow in the same way as in the previous term. For example, let's take NOD that registered a 8-6 is equal to positive two votes change in a period lasting around six months. The projection sheet rounds it to exactly six months and applies the changes in all of the following terms. So NOD, according to this method, has a projected votes count of 10 in July 2020, 12 in January 2021, and so on. Obviously, the projections can't describe exactly how the situation will go, but are more like a calculation on the effects of the swings if they continue. So what is your analysis on what will happen in the next election? The projection said that WAP overtook UWH on March 9th, 13, 1845 UTC, but a myth of my projections is to believe in them as what is exactly happening and not as what can happen if the parties keep the trend. Delfino 88 survey is also another way to understand what is happening, and I respect the results of this survey. Here we can see something different from the projections like UWH keeping close to the top spot, despite WAP being close, or NOU being ahead of NOD, and EEE and HGP being taken into account. The projections didn't count them, and the two results are obtained using different methods that bought two different results. Immediately after your projection, Delfino88 from uh, the Wolfhaven Architect Party conducted a party popularity survey. The results show uh, United Wolfhaven still in the lead. Do you have any comment on that? The projection said that WAP overtook UWH on March 9th, 13, 1845 UTC, but a myth of my projections is to believe in them as what is exactly happening and not as what can happen if the parties keep the trend. Delfino 88 survey is also another way to understand what is happening, and I respect the results of this survey. Here we can see something different from the projections like UWH keeping close to the top spot, despite WAP being close, or NOU being ahead of NOD, and EEE and HGP being taken into account. The projections didn't count them, and the two results are obtained using different methods that bought two different results. And that's it for this edition. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next month. Remember you can catch up on any of these stories on our website, 